the underpainting, the groundwork, the colors underneath the fur markings are in place. Now we can go in with textures and fur markings. I'll use the consistency of thin milk to whole milk for the fur markings, and I'm bringing more black down from this area where I mix the blacks. And dip the brush in water and pull some color lower. You don't want to add too much, but add a bit of water at a time until you achieve the consistency of milk. I tend to use the consistency of whole milk in areas that are darker in value and the consistency of thin milk in shapes that are lighter in value. The key to creating nice thin hairs is to pick up color with your clean, almost dry brush. and just a bit of color on the brush. You don't need a lot. Let's start with this dark shape. And what I'm doing is barely touching the brush to the paper and just creating some lines. And you don't need to create many of them. In fact, I think that's all we need. I'm not, whoops, I don't need that color. I'm not even looking at the photo right now. What I'm doing is, I'll move into this shape. I'm applying hair markings with the tip of the brush, barely touching the brush to the paper, and following the contour of the shape, spacing the hairs apart so that you can still see the lighter values underneath. My color is beginning to separate on the palette and I'll just mix it with the synthetic brush. Okay. So I'll go shape by shape using the consistency of milk. I'll move into this shape next. And what I'm going to do is curve these hairs to follow the contour of the shape. And we don't need a lot of hairs in here. I'm using a very light touch. And I'm using the consistency of thin milk. And what I'll do then is go back in. That's about it for that shape. I'll move up to this shape. What I'll do then is go back in with the consistency of whole milk. After I've got these more pale markings in place, I'll move to this shape. I'm not looking at the photo. I know that there's a glaze coming that will smooth these textures. So move shape by shape, barely touching the brush to the paper, creating fur markings, spacing the hairs apart so you can still see the lighter values. I'm working around the end of that light shape. Okay, now I've got the more pale fur markings in place, the consistency of thin milk. Rinse the brush and wipe it on the towel so it's as dry as you can get it and find an area on the palette that's more like whole milk. And we'll get some darker hairs in here. Okay, here I missed, I missed this area, so I'll get some hairs. I am looking, I look at the photo once in a while just to make sure that the curve of the hairs is correct. Now I'll just go in and put in some darker hairs. Not everywhere. So we have a mix of darks, lights, and mid-tones. I want to see darker hairs, I want to see lighter hairs, and I want to see in-between values. You can still see the previous color and the previous values through this application.
and you've created layers of texture, layers of fur markings by starting with the more pale hairs and then going in darker. The next thing I'll do is look at the transitions from dark to light. Are there any places where the transitions from dark to light need help? For example, right here we've got this dark line. And if I just add another hair marking there, that will help that transition so it's not so abrupt. Okay, that looks good. Are there any places where you want to put in some darker hairs? Just to reinforce the dark values. Looking around. Okay. Now I'll go from shape to shape. Looking at values. Do we need to just enhance any transitions from dark to light? just by adding bits of color in the form of hair markings. I'll look at this shape and do I need to go in darker anywhere? Do I need to make thicker hairs like maybe here? I'm using just a bit of color on the brush and barely touching the brush to the paper. Just taking some areas darker. Move to this shape, which I think is looking pretty good. All right, I'll move to this shape. And I think I'll go a bit darker there just to help bring that shape out. And a bit darker there. Often when you just apply a darker hair or two, it really makes a difference. All right, I'll go over here. And I think I'll go in here and just make that darker. Okay. We've got hair markings. I can still see the shapes that I created. I can see the lighter values and the darker values. Contour. Okay, I can see the shadow areas in the darker shapes, yet we can still see texture. The next step is a glaze, and this is optional. If you wish to smooth the texture slightly and unify the values, I'll show you how to do that. I'll use this gray, but it needs to be super pale. This is going to be the thinnest consistency that we've used yet, like tea. I'm adding lots of water. For the glaze, I like to use a larger brush and I'll use the number three. This is clean and dry. And you don't need to load the brush with color. I don't want it to be dripping wet. Now what I'll do is I'll work shape by shape, starting here. 
use a very light touch, barely touching the brush to the paper, and those textures underneath will be slightly smoothed. Rinse the brush and wipe it on the towel before picking up new color. And I'm just picking up color on the tip of the brush. I'll move to this shape. Now, if I want to keep this area lighter in value, I'll show you how to do that. Maybe I want to just put the glaze there and there. And now what you can do is just dip your brush in water, wipe it on the towel, and you can glaze with plain water right there. So the middle of this shape will be smoothed, but won't go any darker. So you can glaze with color and you could glaze with water. I'll lay the gray into this shape using a very gentle touch and it will take it slightly darker. Let's keep focusing on the darker shapes. For example, this shape is a bit lighter in value, but it's darker here. So I'll lay in the gray and I'm following the contour of the fur as I lay in the glaze. So I'm curving with the fur or the hairs. Good. See how we've taken that slightly darker? Rinse your brush, wipe it on the towel. Now I'll avoid this lighter shape for now and I'll go over here with the glaze. You don't need a lot of color on the brush because we're working in a small area and use a very gentle touch barely touching the brush to the paper and working around this shape. This is slightly smoothing the textures. Okay, now we've taken the dark shapes a bit darker with the glaze, but I need to give attention to that shape and that shape that's lighter in value. I think I'll move back to the zero brush because they're smaller shapes. This is starting to separate and I'll just remix it. This is the consistency of thin tea. My brush is clean and dry. And what I'm going to do is just lay the glaze in there and there on the ends, then rinse the brush in water and wipe it on the towel. So your brush is just damp and I'll lay water over that part of the shape. So the textures will be smoothed, but it won't go any darker. Rinse the brush, wipe it on the towel. I'll do the same here. I'll lay in the gray, the consistency of thin tea at either end, taking it slightly darker, but then I'll use plain water to smooth those textures. And that's the glaze. We've taken areas just a bit darker and we've slightly smoothed the textures. This needs to dry completely. And then we'll go back in and do any necessary touch-ups. This is completely dry. Check it with the back of the little finger. Sometimes during the glazing, as textures are smoothed, we lose some of the darkest values and it's necessary to just go in and reinforce the darkest parts and maybe some fur markings. So I'm adding a bit of water to this area up here, which has dried. I'm looking for, I'll maybe bring a little more in. I'm looking for the consistency of thin cream. Bring in color from the area where you mixed your blacks as needed. I'll use the zero brush. This is the consistency of thin cream and I'm focusing on any parts that need to go just a bit darker in value. Maybe we lost something in the glaze. So shape by shape. That's looking pretty good. I think I'll leave that shape. So I'll look here. That's looking pretty good too. I'm focusing now on the darkest parts. Okay, how about right here? Maybe I could just lay in a couple darker hairs. Let 
that will dry a bit lighter, but I just laid in a couple darker hairs to create some interest there. Okay, I'll look at this shape now. Maybe I could go a bit darker right there. Make decisions based on what you see in your work. I'm barely touching the brush to the paper. I'll take that just a bit darker and this line right along here just a bit darker. Here and there I'm laying in some darker values. Just a couple darks here and there make a big difference, but you don't want to overdo it. Okay. Now the next thing I would do is ask yourself, do you need to go in anywhere to reinforce any midtones to enhance the curve of a shape? I'll pull some of this consistency of tea up here to create the consistency of milk. I'm looking at, let's say you wanted to take this whole shape just a bit darker in value. You could pick up a bit of this consistency of milk and just gently lay it in. And that would take the entire shape darker, which would bring out that shape. Same thing here. This lighter area is kind of hard to see. And what you could do is just take another, it's, I guess you could call it a glaze, but I'm using the consistency of milk this time. I'm taking some areas within this shape, darker in value using a very light touch. And there, now you can see that lighter shape better and you can see that lighter shape better. And maybe I wanna just overall take that area darker. But these applications are so thin that you could still see all of the textures underneath. Let's say I want to enhance the curve in this shape better by taking this area and this area darker in value. Use the consistency of milk and very gently apply a bit of that mid-tone color and gently soften the edges by just kind of guiding them into the lighter value. And there you've gone just a bit darker. You could do the same thing here if you want to. Just use a consistency of milk to take that area a bit darker. Now the trick is to allow the previous color to dry. Now what I typically do is walk away from it for a couple hours to a day because when I return, I often notice new places that can be adjusted. But look what we've done. We started by laying in the darkest and lightest values. Then we moved to the darkest shapes, which we've been constantly adjusting. Then we went to the mid-tones to create smooth transitions from dark to light and to enhance the contour. This is followed by fur markings, which help to create contour and texture and then a glaze which slightly smoothed the textures and took values just a bit darker. That's the formula that I will use for the rest of this ear.